welcome to all the participants and we thank you for attending this uh, MNH Biodiversity Data Mobilization and uh, uh, Use Leveling Off Workshop. And I hope that you are all healthy and safe despite the challenges and stresses due to the pandemic. And before we start, may I request everyone to mute their audio and, mute. Uh, and to conserve your bandwidth. Um, maybe you can also turn off your video up until the open forum of the orientation. Uh, I am also letting you know that the whole activity is uh, being recorded. And so far, we have admitted 27 participants. And to start the ball rolling, may I call on Dr. Juan Carlos D. Gonzalez, our director, for a short uh, opening message. Thank you, Floor. So I'll just share the screen. So uh, and good afternoon, everyone, to the uh, workshop on biodiversity data digitization and mobilization project. It's a leveling off and planning workshop. Um, it's a project of the Museum of Natural History. Um, so I'll just give you sort of a background or what happened with this project. So uh, for recent times, the focus of natural history museums worldwide is to increase uh, digitization of museum records. So it's quite a, a global trend in the past 10 years. Actually, I remember seeing it even in 2008, 2009. It's a similar digitize in British museums such as Cambridge. Zoology was actually starting to make uh, photographs of each of their um, uh, seashell collections. So it's, it allows global connectivity. I think most must simula it around herbariums because say they were putting up these, so you see on the slide there, uh, all the specimens are digitized. So it's, it's easily available worldwide. Um, so you don't actually actually see and feel the specimens. You actually can see. So meron na siyang, um, barcode, may measurements, there's a color code, um, which allows you to uh, sort of virtually see the specimens, even though it's on another continent. So it allows global connectivity. So these are kind of the, the, the startup of digital collections and databases for all museums worldwide. Um, for those who have been using the database, we've been using um, ORNIS, some among uh, uh, bird museums. Ornis was sort of a database that allows to see the, uh, the, the data collections from each of the museums participating. Um, and then increase to VertNet, which allows all the uh, vertebrate collections. And of course now it's in GBI. Um, for the museum, I think it was one of the initial talks between um, members of uh, the Slack Kahoot looking into a collaboration after they went to a herbarium conference, I think it was Okinawa, no? Uh, Michelle and Sinabang uh, Matimam Hadzal. And of course, it then gained momentum. And um, it was actually when uh, we attended uh, two more symposia that we kind of put together. Ang kailangan na talaga ng proposal. And emphasize nga ni, uh, ni Jeboy. So si Jeboy yung nag-spearhead ng proposal. And it's more about not just digitization, but more of publishing the data, putting the data of the museum out there. But of course, we're a little bit, hmm, so it's good that we'll be able to attend that workshop. So, so your influence then came from the symposia we attended a um, uh, few years back. So you say yung sa ICOM, International Council of Museums, Natural History. Um, then we attended the Jebuela Students uh, Society for the Preservation of Natural History Collections. Karamihan ng mga um, yung sets of sessions were always about digitization, digitization of uh, botanical specimens, entomology, kanakanyang session, all about digitization. There were actually companies which provide the digitization itself from camera, specific cameras to specific um, uh, software that you can use. So, ito nga isang example na kahita natin. So, and then, of course, in March 2019, um, actually it's not just me, but also Mom, uh, Letty was there uh, because we was able, uh, it was actually hosted by her watch. So together with USD and National Museum. So there was a GBIF training workshop, um, you can see there. Uh, so it was part of the biodiversity data mobilization. So I think that was a major influence for us to start thinking about digitiza digitization 
of museum records. Of course, it inspired the development of proposals. So, this is the proposal that we submit to uh, BIFA, which is the Biodiversity Information Fund for Asia. And of course, it's the first of its kind in the Philippines for Natural History Museum. Uh, you know, it was influenced by National Museum in Dipasi to start mag apply for the BIFA grant. So, actually, we you know, the first were able to, uh, to access the BIFA grant. So, it's, it's entitled Digitization, Mobilization, and Regional Heritage biological specimens of UPLD Museum of Natural History. So that's part one, because it's, it's quite larger collection. As you know, we have the second largest collection of natural history specimens in the Philippines. We can claim the largest, because of course, the, the National Museum is the largest. But I think we can claim that we have one of the, the second largest in terms of collective uh, specimens. Um, so it, it, it's our view that it, it aims to provide uh, biodiversity data to, that we can upload to GBI. Of course, we can control the data that you want to, to put up there and allow remote access. So most people then know, ano bang meron tayo? So it's hard to say that you want to exchange specimens or you want to collaborate on specimen identification, but the world doesn't know what we have. So ganun din naman tayo when we access GBI, if you want to know what specimens. So actually, been using GBIF, Vertnet, and Ornis to track down hornbill specimens as well as sort of boar specimens. So it's, it's amazing that we will have that opportunity not just to upload the data records but also make it more accessible. So it's quite timely now. Because most of us are work from home. Um, so it's actually something that you can do online. Um, it actually is good because it increases global as well as local access. So it's not just for the Global Museum, but also other museums within the Philippines, because we, we, we kind of have restrictive access. I think we can still allow visitors who want to look at collections. I say there is some degree of uh, social distancing involved. Um, and we're also putting up a set of biosafety and security safe uh, protocols that allows us to do that. But for, for the meantime, mas madali pa talaga yung, um, virtual access, so there's no access due to the pandemic. So it's quite timely during this pandemic. So uh, we are fortunate that we've been um, able to begin the Florida Anija Bimama in details about the project itself, but it's now being financed through the BLDFI. We were able to get about 15,000 euros for this project, which is uh, a sizable, but so it's part one, so we can actually apply for three. So, um, we aim to introduce this to you, not only to the staff, but also to the curators who will be involved. Kasi kayo po yung taxonomic authority that is needed to, to verify and, 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 and confirm some of the specimens that are on the collections. So with that, um, I'd like to uh, officially open our workshop. Um, I think this is just the first. Uh, there will be more upcoming workshops that are focused on particular components of the project. Um, so it's just uh, the kind of an introductory workshop for us for the first two hours. Um, and I bid you a fruitful and fun workshop. And, and oops, sorry. Thank you, Sir JC. Uh, okay. So, ayun, yung contributions of the, the curators and the staff are quite important. So, sana nga po, it will be regular. So when we do start putting it in your TOR, so ngayon po ay, you, I have, everyone has gotten their, curators have gotten their appointments. So this next senior appointment, salagyan na po natin ang TOR, kasasama po natin ang sa inyo TOR. So um, hopefully that will be more official. Um, so with that, again, salamat po and stay safe. I'll okay, bring sir. you back to work. Thank you, Sir JC. Sir. Okay, so thank you, Sir JC. All right. And our... Uh, our orientation will be given by one of our colleagues, Dr. Jeremy Carlo Binaredo, who is also the coordinator for collections management. So he will be talking further about our GBIF BIFA funded project, uh, probably for around 30 to 45 minutes. And after that, we will have a 10 to 10 to 15 minute uh, open forum. And if you have questions, uh, you can type it. Uh, at the chat box and uh, Jeb Boy will strive to answer all of them uh, within the given period. So 
Uh, Jeboy, can you do your presentation already? Okay. I'm on share on screen. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Paulette. Welcome to our workshop seminar. Thank you for attending, giving time para uh, maka-attend dito and makinig and mag-participate. So, first, before long workshop proper, I'll um, introduce first konting background. Basically, kung ano yung pro nasa proposal mismo, I'll just present it to everyone. So, welcome ulit. And quick view lang ng mga involved uh, institutions and partners dito. So, of course, as Museum, and then in GBIF, and Ministry of Environment of Japan as a funding agency, and then ACB, and we'll, we'll also partner with BirdNet and UPLBFI as uh, financial administrator. Okay, so a quick look at um, the outline. So I'll give project details, uh, the goals and objectives of the project, um, some co uh, sort of concept conceptual framework, yung methodology, and then the personal involved, and uh, we'll, I also explain the capacity, capacity building component of the project and then the required milestones. Then at the end of my presentation, I'll explain a bit about the workshop mechanics. Okay, so the project details ito. So it, it's coded uh, BIFA 5 underscore 021. So it came from BIFA 5. It's, this is the fifth uh, call for projects of uh, the Biodiversity Information Fund for Asia and we're, we've been given the number 21 and out of around 30 proposals, uh, 9 lang yung na grant nila so we're very lucky to have been given the chance to conduct our project on digitization and the funding agency again is uh, Biodiversity Information Fund for Asia, a program of GBIF and the funds itself came from uh, the Ministry of Environment of Japan. So they've been doing this for around five years, more than five years already. So the duration will be from, it, it actually started back in last month, July, and will run until December 2021. So originally po, one year lang talaga yung projects, but because nagkaroon ng uh, health crisis of the COVID-19, tinayaga ng funding agency na mag-extend yung projects up to the end of uh, next year. So the total grant amount is 14,992 euros. So up to 15,000 euros yung maximum and then yun yung na tingin natin. Yung original proposal, yung conversion to Philippine peso is around 864,000 pero nung pumasok na yung pera sa UPLBFI due to exchange rates, pumaba siya to 836, around 836,000. Okay, so we've, we've partnered dito sa proposal with ACB, so since sila yung tinatawag na GBIF node dito sa ASEAN and it also covers the Philippines, so we humingi tayo ng endorsement from ACB to endorse the project to GBIF. <clears throat> And then we'll, we, uh, we also contacted the GBIF VertNet to uh, help us in publishing yung data sa GBIF. Then of course, yung as said na earlier ni Sir JC, the financial management is was given to UPLBFI. And kung gusto nyo pang makabasa about this project, uh, gumawa yung GBIF ng very nice website for the project. Ito yung link. I'll paste din siguro sa chat box or in email na ata ni Kuya Flor to to all the staff. Yan. Mas nakakatuwa, ginamit nilang ginamit nila to dun sa sa project website. Ginamit nila yung picture ng Koya from Luzon. So, galing yan dun mismo sa uh, project website. Okay. So, sa objectives and goals, the long-term objective of the project is this is an initiative to develop a system of digitizing, not only digitizing and data, but continuously publishing data sets based on UPL DMNA. So, hindi lang natin i-digitize yung data natin, but we'll also want to share kung anong meron tayo through GBIF. 
and this system can be adopted by other institutions in the Philippines. So, so we will try to be a model for Philippine institutions in publishing data from natural history collections. So a specific goals is to establish, yan, to establish a standard digital databasing for MH collections. And then through uh, some funds, we'll, we'll buy equipment for necessary for digitization of specimens. And then we'll, we'll, we want to have a system of validating data. So gusto natin na high quality data yung ipapublish natin. And then uh, successfully, successfully promote our project and encourage other institutions. So dito papasok yung capacity building activity, which I'll explain a little bit more later. Okay, so before ako mag-move on, I'll just reintroduce to you yung GBIF. Hopefully, uh, some more, a lot of you napanood yung uh, video link shared through email about GBIF. So it's an international open data infrastructure funded by government. So sa GBIF, meron mga member states member governments who are actually paying, may parang sustaining fee to become a voting member of the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. So this platform allows anyone from, from anywhere to access all types of data about life on Earth. So this is shared across national boundaries by the internet. So by encouraging and helping institutions to publish data, GBIF enables research, so na hindi not possible before and informs better decisions to conserve and sustainably use the biological resource of the planet. So maraming uh, groundbreaking researchers ngayon using biodiversity data, so we're doing big data analysis, so they're using um, georeference data of, uh, of species distributions to get to analyze karamihan, uh, with climate change and yung sa conservation. So malaki yung promise of um, publishing and our data being used and being cited for future researches. So itong project is mainly goes around the biodiversity informatics. So not to confu be confused with by informatics, biodiversity informatics is the application of informatic techniques to biodiversity information. So it helps in improve data capture, data cleaning, um, data sets management, and improvement and analysis and interpretation. So iba pa yung biodiversity data mobilization. The mobilization is the process of establishing an automated mechanism for sharing biodiversity data. So mobilization, ibig sabihin, we'll make, we'll, we are making something capable of movement. So kung baga, literally, yung data from our collections na nakatago is move natin palabas. And we'll share, try to share it to the outside world, to, to the world. And then, some more specific goals, ito yung data sets na deliverables na nilagay namin sa proposal. So, this is just for the proposal, pero sa ating project, pwede pa tayong magdagdag or pwede pa nating mabawasan itong mga um, uh, deliverables na promised. So, kasi medyo malaki yung na-promise na natin. So, for example, itong three out of, uh, two out of four sets ay up to 5,000 records. So, medyo malaki siya. So, posible pa siyang mabawasan and madagdagan ng iba pang data set. So, yes. So, to visualize yung um, pinaka-activities ng project, so, dapat nag-start na tayo with procurement um, this month, also, nagkaroon ng problema with the, sa pandemic, kaya hindi pa makakapag-canvas and all of that. And then, attendance to GBIF training. I've been attending yung uh, GBIF training workshop para ma-capacity ma building, para ako yung magre-relay sa, sa other staff kung ano pa yung kailangang matutunan for digitization. 
So, gagawin natin yon through the help of ACB sa data entry workshop. So, um, siguro next week po, magkakaroon pa ng isang short seminar from one of the staff ng ACB. Introduce nila yung data entry software nila na yun yung gagamitin natin. So, importante lang dito makita is sa January next year, kailangan meron na tayong na-publish na isang data set uh, as part of the midterm report submission. Publish, kailangan siya ma-publish online. And then, yun, ang next na reporting na po is uh, next next year, December. So, sa so workshop, ma makikita natin, sa workshop later, makikita natin kung ni involvement ng isa't isa sa mga activities na to. So, so, for the project framework, ito siya. So, una sa lahat, kailangan natin ng planning. So, ito yung ginagawa natin ngayon. So, sa planning, malalaman natin kung ano yung mga kailangan natin i-digitize na specimens, which ano yung ipaprioritize natin. So, we'll base this on its potential use or sa needs and based sa ka 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 kakayanan ng manpower natin. And then through that, magkakaroon tayo ng plans and strategy to start digitization. And then after that, we, we must organize or, and have a proper workflow. So we, ito magbe-base dun sa kung anong equipment meron tayo, anong software yung gagamitin natin, and sa mga additional staff na mga ma recruit pa natin and may involved sa project. And then through that, magkakaroon tayo ng protocol, protocols and procedures. So, after nung establish natin yung workflow, we'll be going to the digitization core or databasing proper. So, it, it this involves yung object conversion. Object conversion means we'll convert the physical object into a digital version. And then transcription, it will transcribe yung data from from the specimens attached to the specimens that transcribe natin into a database. So, as a, ang result nito is yung digital asset natin, which is usually data set. So, data set is a big, a big a collection of data um, that we can or we should manage. So, data management, dito natin i-standardize yung formats and i-explain ko pa later kung ano yung mga standard formats na kailangan gamitin. Then more importantly, we should have a backup for our data. Siyempre, ayun naman natin masahin yung pinagpagura natin from around three months na pagdidigitize. So after that, we'll have a standardized data set. So after mapaganda, makuha natin yung quality ng data set na gusto natin or ng required ng GBIF, we will be sharing our digital data. So sa digital data, we'll have, we'll are, we are required to produce a metadata Metadata, I'll explain, about, I'll explain more later, but this is basically the data describing our data set. And then, mapping sa integrated publishing toolkit. It's, uh, again, I'll explain more later. And then, this is results to publishing. So, sa so publish our data set will be publicly available sa web. Pwedeng sa, kung kaya sa MNH website, pero mas madali through the GBIF platform. Okay, so in, in more detail, yung digitization process. So it starts with uh, curation and staging. So dito sa part na to, we will be preparing the sources, yun yung specimens for digitization. And then this importantly, important part dito is to assign unique identifiers. So in our case, ito yung mga nilalagay natin, binibigay natin na accession numbers to our date, to our specimens. So involved dito, it will be curators and respective collection managers of each section. And then after that, and not really required, pero highly encouraged is and highly um, beneficial to our data is image capture and processing. So image imaging specimens, this will include a a proper workflow and handling and file storage and quality control. And also, kung ano yung required file types for, uh, for publishing online. So, 
involved dito mag-hire tayo ng imagers or yung kukuha ng pictures and of course yung quality checker. So kailangan maganda yung quality ng images bago natin siya i-publish. And then yung isang uh, required, so yung may asterisk ko pala, yun yung mga required steps for digitization. So yung core of the digitization process is the electronic data capture. So dito, i-capture natin yung information from the specimens and we will put it in our database. So this can be manual or manual, which means uh, manual na tinatype sa keyboard or automated. Meron ng mga programs ngayon na pag pinicturean natin, kadalasan dito yung mga herbarium sheets, pag pinicturean nyo siya, makukuha nyo yung uh, data from the collection data na naka, nakalagay sa herbarium sheet and then matatransfer nyo na yun sa database. Pero hindi pa tayo nakakating doon, but we'll try to get there po. So, and the last step na pwedeng gawin is georeferencing. So, I think that it's yun siya. Kasi nga, yung mga data sets na nagagamit for large um, analysis, data analysis, is usually merong georeference or merong exact accurate geographic data attached to the data sets. Okay. So, yung data standards that I've mentioned earlier, so ito yung tinatawag na Darwin Core. So Darwin Core is a standard that includes a glossary of terms intended to facilitate uh, data sharing of info uh, sharing of information about biological diversity. Siyempre kasi po yung iba't ibang institutions, iba't iba yung um, format nila ng pag-encode ng data. So hindi 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 lagi halos na pareho yung ginagamit na data fields sa mga sa mga Excel files usually. Pero pag magpa-publish tayo sa GBIF kailangan sinusunod natin yung Darwin Core. So, i-match lang po natin yung ginagamit natin na mga mga data fields. Kung nga sa locality, locality, barangay, town, ganyan. May, may mga matching fields yan sa Darwin Core na gagamitin natin para lang standardized and ma-share natin and magtugma siya dun sa kung anong mapapublish online sa GBIF. So, ang gagamitin natin um, kung mga core, tinatawag nilang core, pero ito yung ibibigay na nila sa'yo na Excel sheet na nakalista na doon sa columns kung ano yung mga required fields ay yung occurrence core. So, it's, this is uh, usually uh, very applicable sa mga natural history collections. This describes location of individual organism in time and space. Okay, so, Ito po yung gagamitin natin na data entry software na pinrovide ng ACB. So, ang tawag dito, Species Encoder. Uh, so, sa susunod na workshop, ma-explain pa further kung paano ito igagamitin. So, very willing ang ACB na kapag cooperate and magamit yung mga products nila para sa dito sa aim na to malaki din yung um, vision ng ACB para makapag-share ng data ng biodiversity. Okay, so, after nung data entry and ma-database lahat ng required na specimens natin, we'll go to data cleaning. So, ito yung inintroduce sa amin sa GBIF workshop na software which is called Open Refine. So, dito madali lang yung paglinis ng mga ng mga data kuno nare meron tayong mga dates na mali-mali madali siyang makita and madali siyang ma-edit sorry nang maramihan or nang in eto sa nakasagi dito edit editing multiple cells simultaneously so sa mga involved na staff sa data cleaning ito ituturo ko natin ito in another workshop so, yung process ng publishing na sa GBIF is gagamit tayo ng IPT, ito yung Integrated Publishing Toolkit. So, dito i-upload yung isa siyang website kung saan i-upload natin yung dataset na from Excel file. And then, dun din, ilalagay natin yung metadata, which is the data about our data. So, it's just an explanation kung tungkol sa yung data. For example, yung sa proposal, 
yung predatory mites of Luzon. So, nakalagay doon kung ilang date, ilang yung occurrence records, tapos kung ano yung scope, ano yung sino yung mga tao na involved, sino yung contact para sa para sa pag-access ng data. Kasi important po dito sa metadata, malalagay natin kung ano yung mga data withheld or yung data na hindi natin readily gagawing available para sa sa GBIF dun sa online platform. So, syempre concern tayo madalas sa uh, sensitive data lalo na sa locality kasi ayaw natin na publicly ma, ma, ma publicize yung ibang distribution na ibang endangered species or yon So, pwede natin i-withheld yun, hindi natin ilalagay. Pero sa ilalagay natin sa metadata, indicate natin na they can access the data kung proper yung kanilang um, purpose by contacting us. Kasi na, na um, required din ng GBIF na yung ito, yung Creative Commons waiver and license is on the CCBY or CC0. So kasi dito, pag, kapag nilagay natin yung CCBY, the data will be made available for use ng kahit sino with proper attribution. Ibig sabihin, pag gagamitin nila yung data natin, we, they need to properly uh, cite yung project or yung data set. And then, after publishing data sa GBIF, we can publish data papers. So, data papers, these are refereed scientific um, papers that is basically uh, based on metadata. So, it is a paper lang na describe kung ano yung, kung ano yung nasa data set natin na na-publish. So, this is a great opportunity para makapag-publish tayo and kapag nagamit yung data, um, researchers are required to cite yung mapapublish natin na data paper. So, sa mga personal involved, so, ang project leader, leader natin for this project is, of course, our director, Sir JC Gonzalez. And our main project contact is the coordinator for collections management, yours truly, Jeremy Naredo. And we highly encourage, or Sir JC will require the involvement of MNH staff and curators. And then we will also be hiring three student volunteers and three encoders, actually two encoders or transcribers for eight months. So, sila yung kumbaga contractual service for the whole digitization um, activities. So, mamaya sa workshop, uh, our roles ng isa't isa will be defined. Okay, so, i -sabi, uh, explain lang din namin for in little detail yung magiging capacity, build, capacity building activity. So, required to nung, ano eh, ng funding agency highly encourage nila na sa project merong capacity building activity or promote, uh, project promotion. And ang proposed ng, ng project dito is to involve um, institutions or staff from HEIs or higher education institutions within Luzon na kung sino yung may mga natural history collections will try to promote GBIF and data publishing sa kanila. And then apart from that, we will we'll also encourage collaboration among these uh, institutions for a bigger project. Hope siguro sana for the OST proposal ganyan on specimen digitization. Parang I envision yung katulad sa USA, sa US, yung meron silang fund, merong program funded by the National Science Foundation just for digitization of biological specimens. So maraming institutions yung involved dito and maraming pera yung in-invest din yung NSF for digitization of biological specimens. So, so ito, yung medyo importante for the budget. So, almost half nung, nung ating budget of 836,000 pesos ay mapupunta sa salary ng students and encoders. So, ito po, kaya Kasabi ko kanina, tatlong student volunteers lang yung e-hire and tatlong encoders lang. Pero nakakalagay dito apat kasi hindi po in, 
inalaw ng funding agency din na magkaroon ng overhead cost or yung admin cost. Kaya eh, kailangan ng 10% ng FI for admin cost. So dito ko po na yun. Masasacrifice yung uh, dalawang volunteers and encoders for to accommodate yung admin cost ng UPLB FI. And then, a big part din ng ating uh, budget will be used dun sa capacity building activity. So, total of 210,000. So, maga, this will be major, um, major, major, major activity of the project to promote in GBIF, uh, promote data publishing. And so this will be maybe two to three day workshop po involving around 15 participants from all over Luzon. <clears throat> and then yung importante pa dun sa imaging equipment and computer storage. So we'll be able to acquire mga four computer units, laptop units, and isang set ng digitization or studio. So meron isang complete set ng camera with lightings and all that required para ma-capture yung image ng specimens. So, importantly, yung milestones again. So, sa December, uh, gen next year, January 31, like, um, will be expected to have already published at least one data set sa GBIF. So, inaano ko na doon, ini-volunteer ko na po doon yung Enton section and yung proposed na data set on predatory mites and na, na consult ko din yun kay Dr. Aros yun yung sinuggest niya na magandang i-publish and then yun the second will be to gain certification at BIFA capacity enhancement workshop so hopefully by end of August makuha na po natin yung aking uh, cert, um, digitization badge so meron silang um, certification criteria pa and then also yon sa end of January din required din mag-submit ng financial report and then the next required reports na will be on the end of next year and then hopefully ma makapag yung lahat ng deliverables na na-promise ng project di pala hopefully required pala na na-publish na, na siya through GBIF yeah, that, that will be all po thank you very much all right, so let's proceed with the open forum. Uh, first question, uh, itong binato ni Sir Edwino, ni Sir Fernando, kasi in the project title, nakalagay daw is uh, part one, Luzon. Uh, why do we have this uh, by geography rather than by taxa? Siguro ang tanong ni Sir Edwino doon is bakit hindi the whole country or... Uh, uh, oh, I can explain. Yes, sir. Please do. Sure. I, I, I'll explain to Jeremy. Yes, but yes, uh, anyway, um, it looks to me na fully set na yung 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 uh, project, ano? And you have uh, a certain number of deliverables, no? Yes, but ang init ko si by Luzon. So obviously, ben, digitize natin the specimens lang from Luzon. Yung bang yes, focus, kasi I was thinking, kung by taxa, by by let's say by plants, genus perhaps I'm just or birds, birds lang mas madaling gawin yun rather than sorting through specimens looking for Luzon specimens. Na wala naman tayong data na, that you can pinpoint that this is where the Luzon specimens are. No? Um, mm -hmm. And then meron kang output na, I'm sure ginawa ng kasama natin yung epiphytic plants of Luzon. And I, that, that is something very difficult to do also by simply looking at specimens without looking at, at, um, at publications. No? So hindi to lahat Sa tingin ko, dun sa output mo, hindi lahat siya based sa specimens. No? I was thinking sana, because funds are very limited, i-prioritize natin gusto natin gawin. I would like to suggest yes. type specimens. Napaka namin natin type specimens, insects, or plants. E kulang naman, pero una dapat nyo na safeguard natin type specimens. In fact, they should yes, be put somewhere else. No? So siguro, dun natin i-focus lang gusto yung, <laughs> yung ating effort for the moment. No? Kasi kung titik, here tayo Luzon, ang dami pang unprocessed specimens from Luzon. So, just just one of the initial uh, comments ko sa presentation mo. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. So, Nagkawin po kasi ng dalawang um, steps or stages yung proposal. So, yun nga din po talaga, 
ang initial talaga on top of the all the deliverables na sinabit natin is uh, holotype specimens. Kaso po, ang yung funding agency, yung gusto nila is focused on geographic or focused on temporal. Ito kung may mga historical specimens. Uh -huh. So, yun nga, kaya po yung naging um, main na target ng project is historical or heritage collections from Luzon. So, part one pa lang naman to, sir. We'll try hey, and we'll, na, we'll try to be you... flexible na dun sa kasi sabi ko nga po kanina, hindi naman strictly masusunod lahat ng deliverables. Oh, na, pero na, na, I understand kasi I, uh, Jib, I, alam ko rin yung galaw ng GBAF. Eh, no? So, yes, certainly bias yung galaw nila. <laughs> And I think one of my other comments na nilagay ko sa chat is Eh, gusto niya magpublish kayo sa GBIF but you know very few are able to access GBIF kasi kung hindi ka member hindi mo mabubuksan yung website nila no and then yung publication mo sa journal comes later bakit hindi natin unahin yung, yung journal first then you have possession of the data kumbaga nandun yung authorship pa na sa GBIF na yan halos wala na yung pangalan ng ng, ng, ng ano dyan din nyo o ng yes, museum sir. maganda yun sir na... opo maganda yung tinatanong ko yung lagi dun sa ano yun sa dun sa naging workshop eh. Kung ano bang dapat unang gawin? Kung ipapublish muna sa GBIF yung data set or ipublish muna siya as as paper. So, ang sinadjust po nila dito is sabay, sabay siyang gagawin na halos or pwede rin unahin para lang ma-publish ma na siya into scientific article bago siya ma-publish sa GBIF. No, sir. Kasi kasi po kapag nagpublish lang tayo, ang ang aim kasi dito sir is mag ma utilize yung pinapublish natin na data. Eh. Pag pinublish natin siya sa pinublish yung pinublish na data from sa GBIF, meron din siyang link yung data set. Oh, so, understand pero like, like I said, pag nandun na yung nasa GBIF na yan, wala na yung wala na yung ownership ng data you see it, it becomes uh, its citation is GBIF hindi yan museum lalabas so very few actually uh, are members of GBIF no so malinaw na meron silang sariling uh, uh, programa diyan sa data and you know uh, so ingatan din natin uh, itong sharing of data sets is very important if you're all willing to give yes. it away uh, tanungin mo sa ACB matagal na naming tinitingnan din yan wala rin nga gustong sumama sa kanilang programa kasi why would you share uh, data to ACB? Anong gagawin ng ACB? And it, if you lose the data, what, binigay mo sa iba, wala ka nang magagawa dun sa data mo eh. No, so sa akin, priority natin sa museum uh, website natin or you publish your own papers. No? Ay, pero hindi ko lang kung pasun na yan kasi wala ka na sa negotiation eh. No? So, uh, we need to be very careful about doing that. No sir, uh, yun po. Sa so, so may mga susunod na workshop, we will be inviting yung representative from GBIF to give more on publishing data sets para siguro mas mas sasagot nila yung mga concerns natin about publishing. Okay na sir? Okay. okay. Uh, we have a question or probably a comment from Prof. Alviola. So the Rabor collection has 25,000 specimens, around 20,000 for birds. 5,000 for mammals and he believes that the Rabor uh, herb collection is unretrievable and most of these were collected mm -hmm. from Visayas and Mindarao. So, uh, ang concern ni Sir Philip ay he is not sure if makakabuo buo ng, tayo ng, ng 5,000 specimens from uh -huh. Luzon. Mm -hmm. Yan lang. Uh, medyo flexible naman yung... And, and what if kung hindi daw ma-meet yung requirement na yun or yung milestone na yun, what will happen? Ano lang naman yun, uh, projected lang naman siya from the proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, pro mga estimated lang siya. So hindi, hindi naman required na ganun kadami yung ma-publish. Ma yes, yes. Okay. And... Uh, Uh, may short na question si Ma'am Cardenas kanina. Uh, how about fish? Uh, is it, would be that included in the GBIF project? Fish. Aha. Uh -huh. Depende. Uh, Ma'am Ma Ma Cardenas, can you elaborate? Oh, yeah. Um, yung, ano lang, I agree with Dr. Fernando, pero hindi ko na alam talaga yung situation now. Tsaka, anyway, nandito na rin naman tayo. Just navigate well. 
Dahil malulus yung ano eh, malulus po nga yung, yung ownership dun sa data. And that had been the issue even decades back, kahit na nag-uumpisa pa lang. Tapos, may I share a bit? Okay lang, floor? Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. So, yung Philippine Biorepository Network, DOST funded yun. Yung nakikita nyo, ginag- ah, hindi nyo pala makikita. Ginagawa ngayon sa IBS yung Medicinal Plant Garden, DOST funded. Pero may sarili ring project yung, yung program. Tapos, i-institutionalize. So, alam ko kahit sa database, pero ibang usapan pa rin kasi medicinal eh. Uh, so, um, yun din. Ganun din yung situation. Pero, uh, ingat din dun sa database. Tapos, eh, syempre, the national government will definitely have the say. Lalo na kung i-plano i- 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 i-institutionalize para ma-secure din. Pero we welcome uh, moves like this kasi mas marami, malaki yung access mo sa ano eh sa data. Kaya lang, navigate very well. Look very well then. Okay, Thank you, Ma'am Lou, for the comment. Um, uh, isang comment ni Ma'am Leti Afuang, isang question. Uh, can the curators and other staff also attend the ACB workshops in the future? Jaboy? Yes, hmm. Pwede, pwede yun. Okay. Uh, so before nung workshop, madali lang naman yung software nila eh. Excel file lang siya na mm-hmm. i-install sa, na i-copy or sa computer niya. And then through that, makakapag mamanipulate na yung software. Yes, and I also believe that uh, we will also be planning uh, our own in-house uh, training or orientation so that we could also do the uh, re-echoing of the information from ACB and also from GBIF. So another question, how about, uh, this is a question uh, fielded by Sir Philip Alviola. Um, how about, how do we do the involvement of the curators who are uh, currently without any appointment with the museum? For example, uh, on study leave or just like that. So how do we uh, look at that? Yan. So for the project, we'll be giving um, project appointments through UPLBFI. So, hindi, hindi naman, I, I, I might need to ask Sir JC kung magbibigay naman tayo ng project appointments through UPLBFI. Mm-hmm. Hindi kailangan na may basic paper as curator yung may involved na personnel. Okay. So, a uh, question by Sir Nel Pampulina. How do we manage to select the participants during the capacity building uh, because of minimum budget? Because there's some... How do we select the participants for capacity building? Uh, yung sa proposal namin from the conceptualization ng, pro- ng capacity building is magse-select each per, per region within the zone uh, magkukuha ng dalawa na participants from siguro uh, state colleges or universities from the zone na mayroong natural history collection. Alright. Ganun po. Ganun po yung criteria. Any more questions? So okay na ho. Probably we could uh, proceed with the uh, workshop. Is it Okay. So, Jeboy, may I request you to present the mechanics of the workshop? Lor, may question yes, pa pala ako. Oh, paha- pahabol, oh, si, ma- si, si, pa- pa- si Mamutia, uh, pahabol. All right. Uh, student volunteers, Jeremy, will that yes, buy in the form of being student assistants or nagtatrabaho sila daw uh, in connection with their thesis? And paano natin kukunin yung mga student volunteers? Hindi mm, ko po masyadong... Basta mga ang clear is uh, hard, balay hard sila ng project. Oh, so parang pwedeng mag-SA? Parang gano'n? Parang, S- parang SA po sila gano'n. Pero kaya, kaya ang pinipili natin ay students kasi sila yung mas familiar syempre with collections or with yung sa certain taxa. And then, hindi naman tayo pwedeng kumuha ng experts na babayaran lang natin oh. 7,000 per month. Oh, kaya, oh po, kaya students po yung tina-target. So how about the encoders? Ano naman ang ano noon? What will they do? Ayun ma'am, magta-transcribe lang po uh, mainly nung sa data from 
pare, sa herbarium, na transcribe lang doon sa computer. So, hindi naman po kailangan ng expertise uh, okay. masyado. Thank you. Thank you okay. Jeboy, uh, Ma'am Letis is asking if she could comment. Yes, po. Thank you. Ma'am Letty? Yeah. Ang ano ko lang is doon sa mga asa logistics doon sa working ng encoding, napansin ko tatlong laptops ang intention. I think pag mas maganda pag sa digitization, centralized yung database natin. So, bibili tayo dapat ng mas a sturdy and central data system na parang if not lap, hindi ako ano sa laptop, it should be a desktop, hard uh, working na siguro mga tatlong units na nakaalat mm -hmm. for the plants for the invertebrates. This is for the vertebrates kasi yung database uh, capacity niya should be there and the working possibility is especially for curators pwedeng doon ikakarga lahat ng mga centralized data dahil target natin as a museum is that our data is in one section. May copy-copy tayo as curators depending doon sa uh, specialized areas of responsibilities natin. But there has to be a central area where uh, inaalagaan that dapat yung data sets doon. So if it's going to be a laptop, Um, hindi ako confident. Madadala yan eh. Matatanggal yung gano'n. Although, although this a ver it can be a virtual database system. Dapat kunwari, itong section na ito, pagpasok ko, kunwari nasa vertebrates ako, pagpasok ko, pwedeng kausapin ko na yung isang RA doon. Oh, ito may data ako. Yung, yung sa process natin is, this goes to this laptop, eh, desktop, and this goes to this uh, centralized subunit of the total database system. Yun yung... Mas, kasi we go for the future, dapat unmovable ang data natin, pero accessible. Ganon, secure. Ganon, hindi basta-basta madadala ng kahit sino. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Any more okay. comments? Going once. Going oh. twice. Oh, Sir JC. Um, so, ko lang reiterate, um, kasi nga magkasama kami ni Jeboy at ni Ma'am Lede doon sa GBI Airport Job. It was a two-day workshop. It took us a second day to realize ano ba ang pwede makontribute ng MNH. Kasi nga, una nating feeling, I see the reservations of a lot of people na, I think I had the same reservations na, ano ko data natin, baka makuha ng GBIF. It's not a matter of what, uh, it's, it's actually, you have the control of what you can provide. And I think, kasi ako nakinabang ako sa data ng GBIF when I was doing my dissertation. I was searching for specimens of hornbills from around the world. And the word, this thing is, yung specimens ng Pilipinas ang hindi ko ma-access. Ilan nga ba talaga? May sulu hornbill ba sa Pilipinas? Kasi lahat nasa Delaware, lahat nasa MNH. Kasi sila, in-upload nila yung data nila. How to access where the specimens are. It's not saying that we have to give all our data. Uh, I think what the system is, is you can control what you want to put out. Ang ano ko lang is, how will the world know that we have this and that unless you tell the world ano yung meron tayo? Kaya tama din na i-prioritize natin ano yung gusto mong sabihin? Ano yung gusto mong i-put out? Hindi naman pwede lahat sabay-sabay. We can't do that in one, even in a, in, in a year, it's not possible. It took years for a lot of the big museums to do that. Even the British Museum, ayaw pa rin nilang ilabas kasi sa dami ng specimens. But they're starting to do it now as well. Yun nga ang ano is, Uh, we want to be global, we have, want collaboration and access, but we still have to let the world know. Ano nga ba ang meron ang UPLB Museum of National History? I think the National Museum starting as well. Siliman has started as well too. Hindi nga nang ganung kadali. So we need to plan it out properly. Tama po. And I, I think I agree with everyone's concerns as well as your suggestion. It's, it's important po na we do this properly. Hindi yung bigla-bigla din. We follow everything by the book and also we control tayo kasi tama din na we have to have some sort of ano ba, uh, ownership dun sa data kasi pinahirapan din natin yun. Okay po. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sir, to clarify na lang din dun, to add to that, pag nag-publish tayo ng data naman sa GBIF, kaya pa rin yung may hawak ng data. We're still data holders. Anytime pwede natin tanggalin yung data pero sila lang yung nag-host para ma- 
ma-share. Hi pa. Thank you. So, so pwede na mag, ano, mag-share ulit, Kuya Flor? Yes, yes. Yun. Okay. Ano rasa ba? Ayun, eksaktong 3. Ah. Dito ko na lang yan, no? Ayan. Nakikita ba yung workshop mechanics? Yes. Ayan, so, so magkakaroon po tayo ng ano, breakout rooms. Magdi-divide into four groups yung lahat tayo as participants. So, magbe-break tayo for 30 minutes. So, mga ilang, after ilang minutes kayo, Flor? Ah. Ilang mga, three we could, na yun. So, mga we, could, three, we could start na. After okay, after okay. that uh, slide, we could start na. Ah. Ready na yung, okay, sige, ready sige. na yung breakout. Okay, sige. Uh, reminder, so ito yung number to so, for Entom group, uh, ako and then si Sazo, o si Cam, and then sa for plants group, si Ate Mitch, and then sa micro and micro combined, si Ate Jen. So, reminders lang dun sa uh, rapporteurs na i-record separately yung breakout rooms. And then, for the workshop po, ang aim lang naman dito is to assign yung roles ng mga involved na staff and curator. So very straightforward lang siya na ilalagay yung pangalan natin doon sa Google Sheet na nakalagay na sa tabi niya kung ano yung uh, roles. I-explain pa further sa breakout sessions. And then, ito important importante po sa breakout groups. Uh, apart from the rapporteur, uh, the group will select a moderator para lang may order sa pag uh, sa salita or pagbibigay ng comments. May, pa, eh, may questions pa po before tayo mag-break uh, out. Jeremy. Yes, sir. Eh, anong gagawin sa workshop? Eh, mechanics itong anong gagawin? What is the, what you, what you need to do? Ayun, sir. I-explain. Mechanics, ano ang pag-usapan? Uh, I-explain po pagka-breakout natin, sir. Bale, ang aim lang niya, sir, ay ma-assign. Ma meron tayong mga roles as personnel involved sa project. Ang aim lang dun sa workshop ay ma-assign ma yung roles sa bawat isa sa atin. Okay po. Explain pa po further pagkabukas ng work ng breakout groups. Okay. okay. Ready na. Okay. I'll be breaking out the room. So, automatic po kayong naka-assign per taxa. So, yung zoo group is composed of 10 people. The botany forestry group is 10. Uh, and Tom group, they have only 5 participants. And for the micro and micro, they have 6. So, I'll be opening the rooms now. Nakikita niyo po? Wala, walang camera si Jude. Ay, hindi, nakikita niya yan. Yung, uh, ito pong shared uh, document po natin. So, for uh, this breakout session po, um, can we assign po a moderator to facilitate then ako po yung mag encode po ng mga napag-usapan po natin. So, uh, the objective po nung ating uh, Breakout session is to wait lang po. Ah, uh, karon pong problem sa Zoom ko. Hindi ko ma-record yung ating. Ko ba nakaka-type pa? Ah, hindi pa daw nakaka-type. Can I type here? Comments muna. So, may um Hindi ko po nakita ko siya yung nag-suggest na. Si Ma'am Ivy po ba yun? Yes, yes. Sige, si Ma'am Ivy. Uh, yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Eh, Palagay ko wala ka masyadong options dito kasi merong deliverables eh. Yun ang susundin natin. Ito yung sinasuggest type specimen sa so wala yun sa deliverables eh. Um, sir, yun yung bahapon. Focus muna, ha? Sir, yung focus muna sa Luzon. Apa? One thing, Luzon specimens lang. So, paano gagawin yun? I'm um, sure yung kahapon po na um, workshop namin, yung po yung pinag-usapan po namin. So although ang sabi po ni Jeboy na ang suggestion nga is Luzon, um, i-prioritize po. Main involvement lang po din ng curators dito is uh, sa quality checking. So after ma-accumulate po yung data, kailangan po ng expertise ng curators to i-check yung quality especially dun sa taxonomic side po nung data sets na ma, uh, ma gagawa.
Okay, and ang um, pagkatapos ko po, yung parami ng involvement po natin is sa uh, writing ng scientific paper, yung sa tinatawag ko na data papers about to... Pa, ako... Ano ba siya, Google Sheet? Oo, oh, Google Sheet po. Matagal lang mag-upload. Ayan. Okay. Okay na. Mm, wala. wala. Ayan, meron na. Ayan. Okay, meron na. Yun. So, eto lang, eto po yung mga activities natin, staging and curation. So, mag-designate lang po tayo ng kung, yung, kung sino yung magiging responsible doon. So, ang ano doon is curator at saka yung collection manager na mga sections. Bale, kinumbahin tayo ni Kuya Flor for this time, pero later on yata, maghihiwalay tayo, Ate Marian. Kasi yung data natin ay magkaiba. Di ba? Mm -mm -mm. Iba kasi yung presentation sa micro kesa sa micro, mm. di ba? Opo. So, parang for this purpose lang yata yung ano, kinumbahin tayo. Pero dadalawa lang kami ni Sir Nitel. At kami din. At kami din. Dadalawa lang kami ni Sir Noel. Oo. Malis pa si Ma'am Goss. Oo. <laughs> So, yun Ay, yung nga pala, Jen. Ay, sorry, Jen. Uh, yes, kasi po. kasama din namin dapat si Dr. Goss kasi sa Algal. Al oh, oh. Algal Collection. No? So, tatlo na dapat kami kaso umalis na ata si Dr. Goss. Wala yes. na ba? Si ma oh, yes, ma'am. Hindi siya atid oh. ng, ng workshop. Okay. Okay. Marami din yes. kasing, date, uh, marami kasing specimens. Yes, marami po. Algal Collection si oh. ma'am Goss. So, And, Iba din yung presentation nung sa kanya. And for sure naman, i-re-refine pa ho naman ito dahil, uh, of course, pag nakita na po ni Jebo yung pinaka-final na input, i-re-refine pa ho ito. Siguro probably we will call for another uh, validation workshop naman. Okay, so please Apo. proceed with your uh, workshop na. Okay, so dito sa staging and curation, Nako, dala-dalawa pala yung iano natin. So sino po ang ang magiging responsible for 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 that activity? Si I, I assume sa sa micro would be Ma'am Marian and Ma'am Marian, only Ma'am Marian, collection manager. <laughs> Hello. Hi. 
Okay. <clears throat> Kuya, bakit wala ka sa ano? Saan? Wala ka dun sa drop down namin sa image capture. Ba, ewan ko, hindi ko alam. I'm not sure. Dapat ikaw yun, di ba? Hindi, image capture. Hindi ako image capture. Sa ano ko sa image It's editing, o oh, yung, yung checking, parang ganun. Anyway. Anyway, mamaya natin i-discuss yun. Pag ano, pag dumating na sila lahat. Kasi yung mukhang yung iba hindi natapos eh. Ang init, grabe. Nandito ako sa walang airport. Kasi sabi mo, umaalong-along ako. Hello, dito. Jen. Hi, Ma'am Marvy. Kamusta ikaw? Ayan, Ito, nandito ka na sa Pilipinas. Yeah, Austra- <laughs> Australia po yan, Australia. Mas ako. Australia ka? <laughs> Hindi. Nang December pa ako nandito. <laughs> Alam ko, nandyan ka lang. Sa kabilang... Inabot ako ng lockdown. <laughs> oh. Alam ko, nasa kabilang... Tibayo ka lang ng bundok na ito. <laughs> sa kanila <laughs> ng makiling. Oh, Kababayan oh. po kami ni Ate Jen. Oh, oh. Pero hindi kayo nakikita. <laughs> Malayo siya. Malayo kami. So nga, uh, sunduin niya siya eh. Sa, pa, pa. Sunduin mo. Hindi eh, po out of, out of the way ka naman eh. Oo oh, oh, nga. Kasi okay. kami pa San Pablo. Ikaw, oh. doon ka sa Pakalamba. Pakalamba ako. Boundary hmm. kami ng Laguna eh. Kala ko dadaan ka ni Charlie. Bumotor? Bawal motor? Hindi kami mag hindi kami partners? Hindi. Ibig sabihin, iiwanan niya yung motor niya sa inyo. Dadali niya sa sakyan mo. Na Ay, ganun ba? Uh-huh. Okay. Para mata namin oh, sakyan mo. Yung rapportures, yung rapportures, lahat na ba ng mga kasama nyo, ka-groupmates nyo ay nandito oh, na sa wala. session? Wala sila. Alright. Automatic na sila. Kalimutan oh. ata yung lib. Di ba may lib room button sa ilalim? Po, meron, automatic po yun. I, ah, okay. Okay. Si Ma'am Ivy, si Sir Pa. Ay, nandito na sila lahat, Kuya. Nandito na? Okay. So, uh, probably we could ask uh, each uh, rapporteur to to briefly report kung ano nangyari doon sa inyong session. Kasi uh, as I was jumping from session to session, yung iba yata ay medyo slow, yung iba ay mabilis. So, probably para ma-level off natin kung ano yung... Uh, kung meron pa ba tayong kailangang follow up na workshop na gagawin. So, uh, let us start with uh, Zoo Group. Nadya na ba si Cam? Oo. Cam? Nadya na si Cam. Nadya na si Cam? Uh, sorry, sorry. Yes, Kuya. Nandito po ako. Yes. Uh, can you briefly report kung ano nangyari sa workshop nyo? Kailangan ko pa ba mag-show po nung ano? Hindi naman po. Hindi naman, hindi naman. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so um, as a summary po nung napag-usapan namin, Um, since all the activities pertains, lahat po yung activity niya is centralized to museum, uh, we only choose the, for example, the reps and admin and student and transcriber to facilitate some of the activities, but they assure that mm-hmm. the quality checking, pwede natin sila ma, uh, ma ask ng suggestion, comments, mm-hmm a clarification for the specific activities since uh, zoological collection also composed of different taxa. Yes, okay. So, lahat po ng curators for zoo is involved po for for uh, the quality checking in uh, ng ating data and also the images na meron tayo. So, yan po yung summary. Okay. So, uh, Michelle, how about the botany forestry group? Um, for the botany group, so yung sa criteria muna ng mga specimens na um, pipicturean at yung data na ikakapsure. So nag-agree kami na mga type specimens muna yung uunahin. And then, um, ano yung nakalagay doon? Yung historical... Uh, yes. Basta ano yung criteria na nilagay natin. So nag-agree naman po doon lahat. And then, sa lahat ng activities, um, nag-agree din po na... Um, although matrabaho siya, pero dapat bago po ma-i-publish din data is na-check po siya nung um, curators ng, sa, sa botany at sa forestry. And then, uh, may concern din dun sa staging. Di ba nag-agree tayo na magiging centralized po siya? Yes. Magiging uh... sa MNH conference room. So, may suggestion po na kung pwede is per collection. So, pag-usapan na lang natin yan later. And then, um, ano pa ba yung napag-usapan? 
I think yun lang yun lang po. Okay. So, let's move to Entong. Ay, kuya, kuya, ah, may naalala. Yes. Sorry, may naalala pa ako. Yun. Uh, mas, gust, mas preferred po na kami po yung mag-handle lahat instead yun sa mga student volunteers. Okay, that's for Botany. Okay. Okay, for, okay. Uh, Jer, Jeboy, for Entong. Uh, similar naman dun sa Zoo. So, for the data capture saka yung sa image, imaging, mainly sa reps and stuff na course stop and then yung uh, curators will be involved dun sa quality checks. Mm -hmm. Pero si Ma'am Amy nag, ano, nag commit siya for the image processing. Okay. And staging din. So, Maiko, Micro, and, Jen, can you report? Wait lang, uh, meron pa pa na po. Meron pa ba? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tapos dun sa ano, involved lahat ng din ng curators dun sa pag-publish ng uh, data, data paper. Data paper. Uh, scientific writing na sa'yo. Okay. Uh, let's move to Micro Maiko. Jen? Oo. Um, so, sa Micro tsaka Maiko, wala naman kasi kaming masyadong um, naging problema. Kasi tatatlo lang, ilan lang ba sila sa Micro? Si Ate Marian, si Des, si Sir Noel, tsaka si Ma'am Goss. So, yung uh, sa selection ng mga specimens na isasama sa sa um, digitization, si Ate Marian yun, tsaka si Sir Noel Sabino, um, i-discuss pa nila with Ma'am Goss kung isasama yung algae? Yes. Uh, kasi for, yung for may, may algae na algae. microbial, may algae na botanical. Oo. Tama yaya so, yata yun. So yun. Tapos, um, yung pictures nila, um, they would it would take time kasi magpi-prepare pa sila ng slides kasi kung yung slants lang or test tubes or plates masyadong boring at saka hindi mo makikita yung differences ng kasi kung base lang sa mga um, growth or colony ganyan mm -hmm. kasi katulad sa fungi pare-pareho naman ang either item or puti ganun din sa bacteria creamy so mag-prepare sila ng slides para yun yung EP picture nila. Tapos, photo microscope. Okay. No. Right. Okay. Tapos, um, sa Maiko, um, uh, so, si Kuya Mani, ako, si Sir Nel, tsaka si Mamocha, pero si Mamocha will soon be retiring. But she promised to help naman in any way she can. Tapos, ang involvement ng curator, ay dun, yun, sa, sa curation, tsaka sa pag- um, TV ng specimen na ipipicturan or isasama sa digitization tsaka sa um, pagsusulat ng, ng paper later on. So, the rest yun. Kami ni Kuya Manny tsaka yung mga student assistants and transcribers. Okay. Anas na idadagdag pa si Ate Marian? Ma'am Marian, meron ba? For, yes? Uh, everything naman ay nai-report ni Jen. Okay na po kami. Okay, sige, thank you. So, uh, I don't know if um, kung lahat ng mga session breakout groups ay na tapos nyo yung pag input do sa spreadsheet, but uh, if not, the rapporteurs will coordinate with Jeremy who is tasked to uh, finalize this uh, spreadsheet. Ah, And Kuya then, Flor, yes, ano lang, hindi, hindi ka kasama sa dropdown ng mic ko. Doon mm -hmm. sa image processing yes. ganyan. Okay. Processing. Pero noted, ikaw yun, di ba? Not noted na lang yun. Okay. Uh -oh. And then, uh, of course, after this, kapag matapos ni Jebo yung spreadsheet, probably we will email this uh, uh, information to everyone for you to validate the information. So, uh, thank you, Jeboy. And uh, as we wrap our activity today, uh, I would like to request the Sir J.C. Gonzalez for a closing remark. Again, take two. So again, thank you very everyone for the participation. Again, this is just a series. It's one of the series of workshops that we'll be doing in coordination with the Biodiversity Data Digitization Mobilization Project Leveling Off and Planning Workshop. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, I don't know there's a few already left, but again, Thank you everyone, uh, staff, curators, for your participation and for your involvement in this project. We hope to uh, complete this because um, it would be useful for us to be able to sh 
not only in improve, improve our own database, but also be able to uh, open up to the world. Um, just wanted to share you one thing. Um, ito kasi isang example kung paano natin siya magagamit. So here's an example of the holotype of uh, Philonopus arcanus, which is the necros fruit trap. It's the only specimen in the world, and it's now on Yale. So they were able to uh, put it up on, hindi siya actually accessible at now, pero nag-start na sila mag-digitize. Pero hindi pa siya nasa GBIS. So actually, ito ay published format. And the same thing, if you, if you think about it, we have specimens. So the, on the right, you have specimens of Idenopos melanospila from our own collection. And the similarities is quite uncanny. But of course, uh, they are two different species. It's just an example of how we can use the data for ourselves. Not necessarily na maput out mo siya direct show sa GBIF all the things that we want, but for our own usage. Kasi magagamit din natin siya eventually. Especially now na hindi tayo lahat maka-access sa collection. And I'd like to take the opportunity kasi for the MNH, kahit po tayo ay nasa pandemia, ay has been very active in improving the services of the museum. Um, so we've updated the MNH web page. So if you have the chance, uh, kasi ho mag Netflix, tingnan nyo po muna ang inyong picture, kung tama po ang picture nyo, yung mga curators sa, sa website. Also, we have uh, online biological specimen identification. And of course, the scientific. Lahat po yan ay online by PayPal at saka bank transfer po tayo at the moment. Kasi nga, wala po tayong uh, physical cashier. Um, if you have the time, you go to the YouTube channel. At if you have the time, also like po ng ating uh, Instagram, TripAdvisor, Google Community, Facebook, Twitter. We're all over social media. And as well as the, you can try looking at the virtual tour on YouTube. So meron po tayong YouTube channel. Uh, and of course, our Facebook page. So, marami po tayong activities online. So, if you have the time, do please check on it. And with that, again, salamat po. Um, thank you for participating and stay safe. Okay. Thank you, sir.